So I got an interesting request recently for figuring out some way to unfold a wall, basically to take a curved wall, an arced wall like this, and how to lay out that elevation flat so that you get the full arc length here, but just laid out so you can see it like this. It's an interesting request, and uh, I'd like to sort of walk through how you can do this. So what I've got here is I've got a wall. If I change the height of it, I've got a representation of it down here, which is the flattened version of it. You can just verify that you've got the same height here, you've got the same arc length here, you've got the same linear length here. And if I go in and I select this guy and I change the wall length, everything's going to change. I got 43, I got 43. I can change the radius of it and everything is going to update. So I can get into how this is made. This is a four point adaptive component that you pick by the start end of the arc in the middle and then the height of the wall itself. And that family itself has nested into it another family. So I've got my one, two, three, four pick adaptive component and nested into it I have this guy which is basically just uh, a calculator. And if I open up that family I can look at it and see that there's just simply a rectangle that has some parameters that drive the wall length based on some basic trig. So we can get into making this from scratch. Let me just close out some of these windows. And let's get going. So I'm going to make a new adaptive component. And I'm going to just illustrate some of the basic principles here that we're after. So if you make an arc, let me just make any old kind of arc here. Da -da 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 -da. In order to find out what the arc length is here, sort of geometrically, that is without you know, cheating and using your arc length dimension tool, which actually won't help us out in this case, uh, what you need to do is you need to derive where the center point is and then be able to find the radius and uh, the angular dimension to get that arc length. So to do that, there's some basic math where you need to go in and if I connect these points with any number of chords, doesn't have to be to the midpoint, I can just go anywhere like that. I can derive what the center of that arc is by basic geom geometry principles. So if I do a right angle off of any one of these chords, whoops, I don't think that's a right angle. If I do a right, if I get the midpoint, and there's my right angle, and midpoint, and there's my right angle. If I trim those guys up so that they meet, that should be the midpoint of my arc. And let's see. Zoop. There it is. So we're going to use that same principle to derive the center of any arc that you put an adaptive component down on and use that to unfold our wall. So let's get going on this one with some reference lines that are using 3D snapping. And I'm going to go gabing, 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 like that. And these are going to be my adaptive points. These are going to be the way that I place this guy. And that's the basis for my describing that arc. One, two, three is going to describe any arc. I'm going to add the fourth point for wall height later on. And what I also want to do is I want to define a plane that this is always going to be referring to. It's nice to always have a plane that you can work with. And I'm going to define those midpoints like so, midpoint and midpoint. And now the trick is, is making that right angle ex uh, sort of extension from those points. So just so it's easier for me to see these guys, I'm going to select those points and I'm going to turn on the work planes. Always. Like that. And so now to move this guy out into here in a, pers in a, a perpendicular line, I'm going to put another point here on the edge of this plane that I've defined with my triangle, and I'm going to host it by intersection. Bam. And then I'm going to connect these two guys with a reference line, like so. 
So now what I've got is I've got one right angle from the midpoint that's going to project out here, but it's short and stubby. And it's kind of a hassle that you have to do this part, but you do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one more reference line, and I'm going to make it not 3D snapping. And I'm going to set it on the work plane of this bad boy right here. So I'm just going to do it big and sloppy like that. So now what I've got is I've got an extension of that midpoint line and a perpendicular line out from this plane. And I can just keep testing it to make sure that it's actually doing what I want it to do. It's staying put. See that that line is just doing one simple thing. It's one perpendicular extension from the midpoint of that guy. Now, I don't have to do all that hard work on this guy because I already have this line out here. I just need to find the intersection between this plane and that point. So if I take my point tool and I go like that and I select it, I can host it by intersection. Pow. Now, I should have, fingers crossed, the center point of any arc that is described by those three points. And I can just do a quick test where I go like that. And sure enough, it passes through all three points. Yummy, tasty geometry tricks. So now that I have that, what do I do with it? Well, what I need to do is I need to be able to make a measurement of the arc that is described that goes through any of those three points. So to do that, I'm going to basically need a couple of reporting parameters that are going to take the angle that's made of this particular arc and the radius of it, and then I can just use some simple math to derive the arc length. So to do that, I need a work plane, and I'm going to make my work plane here by making myself a dummy plane, and I'm just going to make it something that looks innocuous, and this is just something that I like to do for making work planes on the fly and I don't want that to show up in my family so so now I've got a triangular work plane and what I'm going to do is I am going to start deriving some measurements so I'm going to take these two points and I'm going to make a reference line connection between them because this is the line that I'm going to want to measure for my radius and I'm also going to need to make another line here for reference plane, uh, another reference line, because I'm going to want to measure my arc length here, I mean my uh, my angle between the angle of my arc over here. So I'm going to go aligned dimension, and I'm going to pick that work plane, and I'm going to go pick and pick, and now I've got my radius length, and it's good to every now and then just sort of keep flexing your model, make sure that everything is still staying hosted, because I found some slipperiness of this particular line losing its work plane periodically. So just keep checking every now and then, make sure that everything's staying hooked up. And I'm also going to do the angular dimension of this work plane between those two lines. So basically between these two measurements of the radius and the uh, arc angle, I can derive what the length of that arc is going to be. So I'm going to make these two things reporting parameters because I'm going to need them later on for something else. So this is going to be angle, instance reporting parameter, and this is going to be, da, 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 let's call this radius, and it's going to be an instance reporting parameter. Okay, so now what I've got is I've got enough information to derive what my arc length is. So what I need now is I want a representation of what that arc length is. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a new family. And this is going to be a new adaptive component. And all this guy is going to do is it's just going to be used to represent that rectangular wall. And I'm going to make just one point out here in space. doesn't matter where I put it. And I'm going to make that my adaptive point. And so this is going to basically be just like a tool for representing what that wall is. I'm going to set the work plane as the horizontal work plane on that guy. And I'm just going to make myself a wall. Uh, let's just see. This guess going to be like that. Or this isn't a wall. This is a flattened representation of a wall. <coughs> and so it's going to have a width. And it's going to have a height, as things do. And just to make it look nice and neat and clean, I'm also going to center it on that point. So I'm going to get my 
dimensions and I'm going to go bing, bing, bing and let's just keep that bad boy centered. All right, so this guy now needs to get driven by my other family to make it represent whatever that arc length is. So if I take this guy, I'm going to make this my height parameter. And it's also going to be an instance because it's going to be different every time I place it. And this is going to be my width. And it's also an instance parameter. And that width is always going to be an arc length. So if I just sort of draw a dummy arc out here, I need to make whatever this width is be driven by my uh, radius and my angle. So basically I need to set up another couple of parameters that are going to be hooked up into my host family. So if I add, um, this is going to be, let's call it A for angle, and it's going to be an instance parameter, and it's going to be an angle, and I'm going to add it to one more, it's going to be radius, which is going to be an instance, and it's going to be a length. Now I've got, uh, let me put in some dummy values here, 15 degrees and 15 feet. So what I'm going to do is now my width, the width of my wall is going to be uh, derived basically from some measurements. So if I want to get the area around the perimeter of a circle, as we know, it is 2 pi r is how you get the perimeter. So if I can divide the whole circle by whatever the angular measurement is, I can derive whatever my arc length is. So I'm going to need a tiny bit of math here. And hold on one second. So what that's going to be, that width is going to be 2 pi r divided by some other value. So that's going to be 2 times, and pi is really funny in this syntax, you do it that way, pi parentheses. 2 pi and r. So that's going to give me the entire perimeter of the full circle that would be described by those three points. But that's not quite what I want, but I'm going to just enter that now just to make sure that my syntax is right and I'm still getting a linear measurement. So what I want is I want the whole circle, which would be that, but then it's only going to be a percentage of it. That is, it's going to be whatever my angular dimension is, A, and that's going to be A divided by a full 360 degrees. So I'm just going to put in my degrees there. So now I have just, if I have a 15 foot radius and I have a 15 degree angle, that just means I just have a fraction of a whole full 360 degree circle, so I'm just going to have a little tiny piece of it. And height is going to come in later. So there we go. I've got my little tiny fraction. I can also take this thing and I can just align it up to here so that it's nice and tidy. There we go. And I'm just going to save this as wall. Wall report, or wall rep. Let's do that. All right, now, so I've got my wall, which I'm going to load now into my adaptive family. Whoops, I left a little piece on there, which I don't want. I left my little dummy over here. Clutters things up. So I'm going to load this guy in. Uh, overwrite the existing one. We don't want that anymore. And so over here, we can see I've got a family, which is my wall representation. Now, I'm going to take my wall representation, and I'm going to place it into this family. I can put it anywhere. Um, I'm going to place it on this face just so that I know where it's going. And then we'll just be sloppy about this. It's just going to represent somewhere out here. And what I need to do now is I need to hook this guy up to be driven by my angular measurements over here. So you can see over here I've got an angle uh, instance parameter and a radius reporting parameter. I'm going to hook them up to be driven by that formula that we established earlier. So I've got my angle and I'm going to have it driven by my angle. Ta-da! And I'm going to have my radius 
which is defined in here, be driven by this radius. So we're going to go like this, radius, ta-da! Now, how do I know that this is right? Always nice to know that what you're doing is actually doing what you want it to do. So we can start testing this one right now. We can load it into the project, and I'm going to load it into my wall family. So now I've got something that I can place, right? I can go uh, endpoint, and I think it was set up with a middle, but I can just put it anywhere along here on that edge. And my last point. Damn it. Erg. So what did I do? Uh, I know what I forgot. Okay. Apologies. One other thing that you need to do with this adaptive component before you place it. Select the three adaptive points. And this is something that messes people up a lot, is the orientation of the points. So these points get a lot of information from whatever they're stuck to. And I want to kind of override that. I want to just say that these guys are going to know which way is up and which way is down based on their relationship to each other. So you know how we went through the whole problem of making a plane here? I want these three guys to always define their own plane. It doesn't, it's not a great explanation, but that's what I got. So I'm going to place this guy back in. Basically what was happening was when I went to place this guy on the wall, these points were getting hosted on the wall and they were sticking off in all sorts of directions because it was taking information about directionality from this wall. So I'm going to take this wall representation. No, oh, wait, sorry, not the wall representation. The stupidly named family 12. And I'm going to start placing those three points. So I've got my start, and this one's actually done by middle, so I can just do middle or anywhere along here, really. And my end point. And just trying to snap end. There we go. So what have we got? We've got a sort of skewed placement, but we've got a rectangle that theoretically has a good representation of what this thing is laid out. Well, let's check our work. So let's get an aligned dimension, and I'm going to measure what this guy came out as, which is 64 feet and change, almost 65 feet. And I'm going to get an arc length dimension from this guy. I can never figure out these arc length things. Anyway. 64 feet, 11, almost 65 feet. So this guy is actually updating to that. And let's see that it actually updates when I stretch this thing around. 51, 51. All is good in the world. All right, so now how do I get it so that this wall is actually driven by the height over here? So we're going to go back over into our family, and we're going to add a fourth point that is going to measure height. So I'm going to go point... And again, you can put this really anywhere out here in the world. Uh, I'm just going to put it on level one. So what I'm going to do is I need something that's going to measure the distance from the base of the wall to the height to the top of the wall. I'm going to make another adaptive point. This is going to be my fourth placement point. And I'm going to connect these two guys like so. Boop. And I'm going to give it, I'm going to make it a reference line because I need that work plane on that guy again. So I'm going to take my align dimension, and I'm going to set the work plane of that line, and I'm going to go from the adaptive point to the, uh, I'm going to tab into the point there. And now I've got something that is going to measure my the height of my wall. So I'm going to add a parameter, and I'm going to call this height. This is going to be an instance, and I'm going to make it a reporting parameter, just because it's telling its state. Now, I've laid it out flat, but, you know, I can I can move that around anywhere here. Yikes. In my space. Like that, and it's just going to be telling me this height. And so now I need this guy to get driven by that height. So I'm going to hook those two things up. I've got a height parameter here that we added earlier and I'm going to get it driven by the height in the host. Pow. No. And now one other thing that we need to do before we go and load this guy in. So right now I have it 1, 2, 3, 4, placing these points. Now remember how we were before defining that this triangle was sort of everything to this family, that it wanted to define what this plane is? 
this guy's going to start to interfere with that a little bit. Without getting into it too much, I can take that out of the plane equation by just changing one thing about it. So this is now a placement point. If I change it into a shape handle point, it's kind of it's kind of a second class citizen to these three points. And basically these three points are still going to go ahead and they're going to define what the plane is of this family and basically where this guy's going to live. And this guy is just going to be along for the ride and give us more information. So if I go and I load it into my wall family again now, and I've got my placement again, I can go, now I'm going to zoom in, I can place my first point, I can place my point somewhere along that arc, I can place my third point, and you can see I've still got my wall right here, right? Well now I've got this guy that's floating out here in space. Who's that? Well that's point four. Point four is again, it's just like the sort of second class citizen. If I pick him, I can now pick a new host for it, and I can drop it up here at the top of the wall. So what have I got now? Now I've got a wall that as I change the height, So as I move this guy along, oops, I don't want to move the whole thing, but I can. Um, I'm just going to move the wall, and I'm going to get changes in my height. I'm going to move my angle, and I'm going to get changes in this. And we can go ahead and we can verify that everything is kosher and where it ought to be. By, if I go and I set my work plane for this guy, I'll do a little align dimension and just read out what the height of my wall is and I'll read out what the I hate this picker I'll read out what my wall height is down here oops there's my representation of it and they're matching up and again we can just reconfirm that this is still the same length as this arc dimension. So, badoop, badoop, 435, 435, 30, 30. And if my design changes, I get automatic updates. One last thing that I can do here is I can also make another shape handle point so I can put this guy wherever I want it to once it gets placed out in the host environment. So I can go in, I can go add another point just sort of arbitrarily out here and I'm going to make another adaptive component, uh, adaptive point and this one is again so I'm going to make a shape handle and I'm going to take this guy, my hosted family, and I'm going to pick a new host for him over here uh, let me make sure it's on the right work plane here, on that guy. So I'm going to pick a new host right on him. And now I'm going to go and reload it into the project. Over at the existing. Yada, yada, yada. And you can see I've got this guy out here now. So what I can do with him is I can push him around anywhere I want might have to remake my dimensions because I think that got a little weird. But So now I've got this guy and I can put it wherever I want my final thing to end up. So I can push it down and I can pick that point and rotate it so that it looks a little bit better for however it is that I want to work on it. And then push this guy just over to wherever it is that I want him to live. So I can have my representation over here. I can have my wall over here and it unfolds it in a different place. So if I have multiple walls, I can just line up all of my elevations over here somewhere. And uh, that'll about do it for now. And I hope that this was a little bit useful. Maybe illustrated something about adaptive components. Thanks for watching.